Gibson of the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Speed and Clint give up hope of ever seeing Smiley again and fly to Mazagan, Morocco to meet the secret police operator who is to replace him, Carlos Del Valle. They are to meet in the famous Spinney's Garden and the boys go there shortly after landing their big plane, conscious of the eyes of a large crowd of Arabs drawn to the landing field by the drone of the plane. Just as they are about to enter the garden, Speed notices that they're being followed by one of the Arabs and as he draws closer sees that the man is carrying a knife. After all the narrow escapes they have undergone since leaving New York and arriving in Africa, Speed and Clint take no chances, but hurry on into the garden, close the gate, and now withdrawn guns are awaiting a possible attack from the Arabs near their plane. Gosh, Clint, no matter where we land, somebody comes after us. Seems like everybody in Africa has got it in for us. Oh, yes, things are happening so fast I can't keep up with them. Keep your eye on that gate, Speed. We'll see what that Arab is going to do next. The radio was coming. He should have been through it by now. Uh, he knew we saw him. Probably figures we're armed and is waiting for us to get tired of watching for him. Not a chance. After seeing that knife, I'll never get tired of watching for that fellow. Look, there's a hand on the gate. It's him, Clint. Look, he sees us. Hold your fire. After all, there's a bare chance he may be harmless. Um, um, kind sir, for the love of Allah, um... He's coming in, Clint. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? Step back this way, Speed. But why? I want to make sure that no one in that crowd outside the garden sees us and this beggar. By the beard of the prophet, you and fiddles are a fearsome lot. Like the fish of the sea, you flee before me, a poor beggar. Oh, do you think of me an octopus? Octopus? Clint, what is he... Oh, wait a minute, Speed. I think I've met our beggar before. You have? Yes, and he's not a beggar at all. But Carlos Del Valle. Come out from behind that cloak you're wearing, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> to say nothing of the beard. <laughs> so, Clint, it took you a long time to recognize me, no? No, I knew you when I got a good look at your eyes. But I wanted to make doubly sure. We've had so much trouble since we left New York that I'm taking no chances. You have had trouble. <laughs> Amigo, since I have come to Mazikan, I have been in water that is very hot. Someone must know that I am to join you at the Atlantean investigation. Clint, is this really Carlos? <laughs> yes, Steve. The famous Carlos Del Valle. Second to none. <laughs> See, that is me. And you are Speed, second to none. I, I guess so. But I didn't know there could be more than one second. Ah, these kid is all right, Clint. He concentrates on facts. That is necessary in our work. Yeah, I'll say so. But where is there a more private place to talk, Carlos? Even the walls of Spinney's Garden may have ears. No, the Arabs honor this place above all others in Madigan. We are safe enough, but perhaps we'd be more comfortable in that rose-covered garden house over there. Uh, shall we go? Yes. Gosh. What is wrong, Steve? You look surprised. I am, Mr. Delvoye. This garden doesn't look like anything like an African garden ought to look, at least to what I've seen of Africa. Of course not. It is an English garden, Speed. Typical. Spinny sort of that. He loved his country so well that when circumstances brought him to Africa, he built a bit of England here in Mazigan. He made good in Africa, didn't he? Clint was telling me about him. Ah, very good. His memory is honored and greatly beloved. But uh, you know something, Speed? No, what? I want you to call me Carlos, not Mr. Valle. Oh, <laughs> swell. Now we are all good friends. And here's the summer house. Uh, let's go in and sit down. Uh, ah, that is better. Now, Clint, what is this all about? One day I receive a cord cable from Chief Riley telling me to meet you here in Mazikan to replace Smiley Preston on the Atlantean investigation. That is all I know. Yes, they, they did away with Smiley in Casablanca. Ah, oh, too bad. And who are they? Didn't the chief tell you? His cable was brief. It's the octopus gang, Carlos. And the octopus himself. Again? Mother de Dios. Is he the lies of a cat? 
When I mentioned the octopus in my greeting, I had no idea he was in back of all these trouble. He is all right. We heard his voice in the whispering cave in Madeira. Whispering cave? Well, I'll tell you as we go along, Carlos. But we'd better forget past history just now and get down to future moves. I have with me all the data we've been able to scare up about this Atlantean syndicate. When we started, it was supposedly a quiet investigation because we weren't sure as to whether it was a swindle or not. But now that we know the octopus and his criminal and organization is in back of it, of course, we'll have to clean it up. Oh, it is amazing, Clint. Why, these Atlantean syndicate is the biggest nose in Africa. The most wealthy men in the world are its chief stockholders. It's only stockholders, Carlos. They've been putting up hundreds of thousands of dollars in the hope of fabulous returns. Naturally, with the octopus gang behind the idea, they'll get nothing in return. Might disappear like Mr. Buchanan. What is this? Buchanan, one of the chief stockholders, came to Africa to do a little investigating on his own. He was last seen in Central Africa. He hasn't been heard of since. But among his effects was a slip of paper bearing the mark of the octopus. Central Africa? Oh. There is little chance of ever seeing Senor Buchanan again. Well, that's one detail of our job. To try to find him. He'll know plenty. Uh, assuredly. All the more reason why you would never find him. We've got to try anyhow. Uh, you know Central Africa well, don't you? Too well. The less I see of it, the happier I am. <laughs> and I'm afraid you're going to be very unhappy for a while. The trail seems to lead right into the heart of the country. Stop, Bueno. I have been in Morocco long enough to be as much of a fatalist as the Moors. What is to be shall be. Yes, that does save you a lot of worry. See, but sometimes we must help fate a little, no? Right. And now, I think we'd better visit the officials here before they get to wondering just what we're doing. I'll get that data too, Carlos, and I'd like to go over maps of the country we're going into with you. Then I suggest we meet at my room, say, in three hours, Clint. It will be dark then. And we'll give you and Speed enough time to report to the Mazikan officials. Take care of your plans and disguise yourself. Disguise ourselves? As what? As Arab Speed. I live in the native section of the city for my life. I have told you I have escaped death by inches since coming here, so I have taken to the robes. And rooms of the Arabs. For safety's sake, I advise you to do the same. I will send the clothes to you. Uh, where are we staying? I have arranged for your rooms for you at the Hotel St. Sebastian. It is French and safe. And they will ask no questions. They see you enter as Americanos and leave as Arabs. Many of the French police live there. The management is used to such things. Good. And where are you staying? Here is the address. Gosh, the last time we got an address on a piece of paper turned out to be an octopus hideout. Uh, don't worry, Speed. If the octopus was hiding out at these address, I would not live there, I assure you. Well, now I go. Better that I go alone. There may be a spy in that crowd around your plane. Yes. We'll wait a few minutes and then we'll continue on about our business. We'll see you in three hours. In the meantime, go to the St. Sebastian. Your disguise will come there. Can we eat there, too? See, si, and good food. Boy, that's all I want to know. I'm starved. And it looks like we're going to need all the food we can get. The way we're hopping around, I never know where my next meal is coming from. Any word from Mazagan yet, Zabul? None, Octopus Master. The fools. Why do they not let me know what is happening? They know that time is important. Perhaps Barlow and Speed Gibson did not go to Mazagan after all. They must have, from what the Casablanca operator told me over the shortwave. But why? Why should they stay on the coast when their investigation would naturally take them inland? Either into the Sahara or the Belgian Congo, where Buchanan was last seen. There is a signal from the radio room. A message must have just come in. Quick, go and get it. Bring it here immediately. Yes, master, immediately. Here I must sit, crippled, chained to a wheelchair the rest of my life, while Clint Barlow walks over the face of the earth, destroying my plans. It's maddening. Maddening. <laughs> but Barlow hasn't my brain. No, I'll beat him. It's his fault that I am crippled. That jumped from his plane. He tried to destroy me, but he couldn't destroy my brain. <laughs> and with that weapon, I will beat him yet. Barlow and the boy are in Mazagan, Master. They went directly to Spinney's Garden. An Arab beggar followed them there. Sometime later, he come out alone. Still later, the secret police. An Arab beggar? My operator could hear nothing of what was said in the garden? Nothing, master. This beggar, where does he come from? Does he live in Mazagan? In the native quarter. Our operator followed him there. Good. Good. Mazagan is awaiting further orders, master. 
I was thinking, Zabul. Thus far, I have attempted active means of stopping the secret police from poking their noses into my African business. Now I shall use the Moorish method. Waiting. Waiting? When they are on the very threshold of our headquarters, they may stumble into it. I shall not wait that long. This Arab beggar you speak of, Zabul, I do not think he is a beggar at all, but perhaps another member of the secret police. To replace Preston. Exactly. Barlow does not know Africa very well. There is always one member of the band who thoroughly knows the country in which they are working. Preston knew it, but now he can help them no more. Who else could it be? I have it. Carlos Del Valle. Del Valle? He is next to Barlow in cleverness. Yes, Saboon. The very man they would choose. And he was already in Africa. He is the beggar. And we know now where he is staying in Mazagan. Good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> what do you plan, Master? Tell the Mazagan operator to gather the others of our band and go to the beggar's address. Sooner or later, Barlow and the boy will go there to discuss future plans. I know. That is their way. Then, then our men are to close in? This beggar's address. It is in the native quarter? Yes, Master. Ah. There will be no trouble from the French police, then. They probably do not even know that the secret police have arrived. Very true. And if they should suddenly disappear from Mazagan, it would be regrettable, sad, but inexplicable. There would be no danger of discovery? Did they ever find Smiley Preston? No, never. <laughs> then, what Casablanca was to Preston... Mazagan shall be to Barlow and Speed Gibson. <laughs>